Hello. Hopefully I'm streaming. I've just seen that my video camera has just gone straight down into there. Am I going to get in focus? Yes. So hello. It's uh, Tuesday p.m. and I'm doing some painting and doing that live. And what am I painting? Bring up the desktop. Oh, zoom in a bit. So yeah, I'm painting some miniatures from Otherworld and uh, Otherworld miniatures in the UK. And they're from their set of models for Barrow Maze Complete, which is a uh, an OSR Labyrinth Lord OSR, which means um, it's for the sort of earlier versions of Dungeons and Dragons, or the variants of that, the uh, the sort of Renaissance style games. It's a big old fat tome, um, Dungeons and Dragons adventure retro artwork, and you can see straight away actually. Um, so here's a model. Here's a, uh, an encounter from the game, and I just happened to stumble on that there, and that's one of the models that I've got uh, before me. I think it's like an iron golem, is it? A statue? It's a greater barrow guardian or something, anyway. I'm trying to see if I can see the stats. Oh, amber golem, it calls it. Anyway, it looks very much like that model there. And... Um, yeah, it's mostly because the Barrow Maze is a setting um, where it's uh, mostly sort of undead going through a, a series of barrows in that classic old school sort of dungeon crawling right the way through. You know, it's one barrow after another. And they've got all the maps for it and the extra creatures. And then actually the models by, um, by Otherworld match those in the book. So there's a fossil skeleton and then they did a fossil skeleton there as well so yeah i mean it's a good set of models and i've had these for a while now over sort of six months or so and you know the classic case the models have been building up i've wanted to do them i wasn't specifically doing them so that i could play with the game or you know i've based them all up on my sort of standard 30 mil round lip basis on the uh, to use in other games like Summer Blades and Heroes and anything I happens to be playing. Uh, but uh, yeah, I thought I'd show where the reference work was because this is what sort of inspired other world miniatures to do the, the set that matched the game. So that's the book. And then the miniatures in front of me, so there's a whole range. Uh, if I uh, get my big face out and make my face small again. So yeah, there's a whole string in there. Uh, ranging from weird dust skeletal fossil creatures as I just pointed out to these sort of more traditional sort of zombie types and I say what I've done which is you can see probably most exaggerated on the uh, on this guy is that I've airbrushed them with a black primer and then in addition to the black primer I've used Liquitex ink to spray on this sort of highlight so that when I paint them there's a sort of a pre-shade the idea is that you pre-shade them using this ink and then um, it makes it easier to paint them because you're putting paint over an existing sort of black and white contrasting shadow uh, that makes it a little bit easier to paint so anyway I've got a whole stack in here some of them have gone on some of them had actually airbrushed some color on as well uh, as like a prime with my airbrush because I just had it loaded up that was a bit experimental with this guy. This is the leech but uh, again Barrow Maze based model from other world miniatures in the UK and um, I quite like the classic look to that. It's got like a little weird pumping heart on top of the uh, the candelabra thing there and everything's in sort of shadow again where I'd uh, sprayed the white ink over it. Now these ones, I don't think these are from Barrow Maze. These are, are they? They're the classic cloakers. And uh, say I haven't painted underneath at all. They've got a little bit of underspray from the white ink over the black. And uh, you say they'll have a grey blue colour, I think, on them when I paint them up. So yeah, I think I'll start. Um, on this bone devil guy. Get that in focus. Where's my little focus thing? There it is. 
Oh yeah, it's got into focus and then it fell straight out of focus. Great. Right. <laughs> if I turn off the autofocus, that's better because then I then I'm in control of when it decides to focus on and on what. And I've turned off all focus now, so that's like total manual. Now that seems a bit better for a moment. I will go to manual focus, I think, because that's too annoying for it to keep jumping back to the background. Oh, well, that makes it a bit easier to see. And you can see the contrasting between the dark and light on the back of the guy there. So I'll get all the rest of these out of the way and then just leave this one out. I put these somewhere where they don't get uh, destroyed. So yeah, the other thing I've got in front of me, apart from just the desktop here, I've, I've got my uh, I've got a wet palette down here, and uh, so because of I'm because I'm using this technique where there's a lot of dark and light on there from the airbrushing on the Liquitex ink and uh, which is very transparent so it's quite forgiving as you spray it on you don't uh, you end up with quite a nice gradient in some places it means i need to thin my paints down quite a lot so i use this uh, acrylic glaze medium so i get a drop of that on the wet palette here and to try and put it on somewhere quite far away from the actual colors going on because it just runs into them and ruins your palette so if I get some of this uh, paint that I'm using here, so this is Liquitex, and I'm trying this out. It's like a new acrylic gauche um, that they do, which is a really strong pigment. So I'm just putting a few blobs of that on, and you can see it's quite thick paint. So if I want a green, I'm going to use the, uh, I'm going to mix together the sort of blue and uh, blue and yellow, blue and yellow. In a quite controlled way that these paints work because you get a little smudge of the stuff. But it's a little bit more liquid than um, you'd expect in, um, you know, in, in paint tubes that you get. I'll get some white on there as well. Mm, that's not coming out. That's quite a handy sort of application with those as well. So. Um, quite a big brush I think oh and I've got the, a little thing to overlay that I can throw up just quickly just to show the color wheel there so again just you know you can see the green there in between the the blue and the yellow and I'm after a sort of darkish green so that's why I pulled out black as well so if I mix together the uh, the yellow and the and the blue I'll start to get the green And then pull in, it doesn't need much black, that's probably too much actually. No, that's darkened it nicely. Let's get in there. You're going to see the back of my head a lot when I'm down there looking at this thing. And then pick up a load of that um, glaze medium there because that's really. Um, important because I need it as thin as possible because so I'm going over the um, I'm going over the model that's already got black and white on it. What I don't want to do is have a really thick paint that's just going to go on like a blob. So that's nice and thin. Let's see that going on then. So I'll get rid of that color wheel there. Desk. That seems to be mostly in focus at the moment. Well, it's trying again there to uh, adjust for the light but yeah you'll see now as I pick up the 
paint I've got like a number one size brush and you can see how thin that is now and then when you go over the the model it's leaving the the white that's been sprayed on as I said before sprayed on with the Liquitex acrylic ink from the airbrush leaving the uh, the dark stuff in the shadows didn't realize actually this guy's got um, tackle which is a first for me I haven't painted tackle online probably get uh, some sort of YouTube band for showing off this bone devils equipment Yeah, so I mean, this is it's like a wash, but the thing is, if you just went on with the uh, the contrast paints, say from Games Workshop, they're quite strong. You can thin those as well, uh, but there's something about using this mixing medium, the glaze medium, again, just as I said, from Vallejo, that's quite nice when you mix it with these uh, strong pigments. Oh, and it's quite quick to paint as you can see already I've got like the highlight on the top of the beast there and I'm doing it for speed aren't I I'm, I am painting it on the the horns and spines as well but I can do those later I was sort of thinking of making them black the spines but I'm not sure and you can see sort of how quick that's going on. One another thing that I've been I do, which I've been, it's been doing for years, and I showed it on some of my other videos, is using oils for washes and things. And once these are all done to a sort of set standard, I will put some oil washes on there as well too. Which brings out again even more of the sort of shading and on the model. You know, I'm no pro painter anyway, really. I just sort of do things, experiment with different techniques. Like I'm these are new paints to me that I'm trying out. Oh, the other thing with this technique is that sometimes you need a couple of coats as well because if you do want the, the colour to come through a bit stronger you uh, you need to go on a couple of times otherwise it could look quite sort of white and pasty but you don't want to go on too strong like I said uh, because it's the pre-shading that's gone on there that's giving it its um, colour already Yeah, so I wanted a kind of a sickly dark, darkish green. No, oh, I've missed a bit on the leg there. This is a, a resin base that I had in my collection for a few years that I've used for it. But um, the other models in the set, I've mostly made the bases for them. I'm now feeling like I need to let it dry a bit before I keep going on. Of course it's a bit glossy and shiny at the moment as well. So yeah, there's nothing special about this technique. Um, what I might do is um, just sort of show you again, sort of fire up the colour wheel there. And uh, just if I sort of mix together a, a blue with a red to get me a sort of a brownish colour. 
just realized this GoPro, the image is a bit dull actually. I think I need to have done some configuration change recently. That's not, it's hmm, a bit annoying with this red. Oh, it does come out. So I just get together some blue and red to give me a darker red initially, I think. Um, Touch of yellow. For a bit of an orange. And then a load of the uh, a load of that thin glaze medium again. Of course, with a flame, I want to go out to a darker color anyway. So, it's not going to be great, but at least it's a base sort of color on there. And then I'll, then I'll go on with a stronger yellow before darkening the top. And because it's a glaze medium as well, it will look a bit glossy, but that will all go, that will all die down when I do the washes on it later on. Well, it's a start, and uh, where's the other one gone? So he's dried off. I started that one earlier, you can see. Let's get a few more models out of the box as well, just to. Um, have them to hand. Maybe this selection of weird, sort of slightly zombie style ones. Because they could probably get away with some of that green on them too. Those might be the same figure, and I've probably just pulled one arm up to make them look a bit different. So these ones I did the bases on myself by using a ruler from Green Stuff World that allows you to imprint a... When I say ruler, it's uh, it's not a ruler, it's a, a roller. I'm going to show it off, actually. It's basically a roller from Green Stuff World that has a texture on it and texture underneath allows you to roll and this one has like a, a metal tread print but I've got some with the fantasy flagstone style prints as well and that's allowed me to um, bake in uh, some green stuff by uh, rolling it over and then it gives you that texture and I've cut the little bits out for it so you see it looks like a vague sort of looking flagstone of sorts on there yeah, and they do these treads of various sci-fi as well as fantasy ones, and the tread one's quite useful. I haven't used that one yet. Yeah, so I've still got some of this green, so I may sort of spill some on some of these guys just to start the process. And you can see again, as a model, I've sprayed it with that uh, ink which means from above, which means the dark shadow is underneath the, most of the model. And I say, um, yeah, then mixing in some of that red and maybe some black for a sort of gory brown through to red color. I can sort of mix that. It's almost like a bit of a wet blend as well because the, the glaze medium means it's um, the green paint is still wet on there while I blend in with this red on the gory bits. I 
the same applies on the side of the head there. I could use the brown and red. Yeah, it's quite forgiving really using these as a sort of a wash. It doesn't mean I'm not going to um, potentially paint some detail on there as well, pick out maybe a few bits and pieces on there. The other thing as a final touch on here would be when it's when it's all done adding a bit of um, gloss medium or just a gloss splat onto uh, onto the um, the gory stomach section so that it looks shiny after I've dull coated it, it'd be like a final step. So you can see that that needs a bit more, um, I could zoom in a bit better as well. Needs a bit more around the bottom of the legs of the green as well. Oh, hi Marshall. Thanks. Um, yeah, well, actually, normally my favourite paint that I use just to always, you know, my go to is um, Private Press P3 work. Thanks, Hector, for putting a comment in. Yes, yeah, so I use P3, and P stands for Private Press, who are the company, the American company. They, um, they make a massive range. So I've got them all over here. There's about 30 or 40. I grab a handful of them you can sort of see what I've got so this is a good example actually uh, as a company what they do is they do two cards and this really helps beginners and it doesn't matter because this is a brand this is a type of model in the privateer press games but they do these pairs so they do a, a base and then a highlight and that having that two colors is brilliant because it means you can very easily go, oh, well, I'll just use the, I'll put the base on and then I'll highlight it. And you'd be surprised how good a model looks with just one highlight. And then you can always blend them as well when you've advanced your technique on a bit. But to start with, you could just use the two. And they tend to do that in the whole range. So there tends to be like a dark tone and a light tone, and then some variations as well. They've got some good browns as well. Battlefield brown is a good dark brown. So I'll get some of that out actually and you can see they come in these nice pots like that and then you would just whip out a bit of the paint I use this wet palette um, just because it keeps the, the paint moist on there if I go over to the there again you can just see just put a bit of that brown down there but like the other uh, colors I've got here these ones which I was showing earlier these I got brand new these are Liquitex if you want to paint cheap, um, I mean, a set like these where they give you one, two, three, four, five, six paints, you get black, white, 
and then all the primary sort of colors that you can mix. A set like that um, is only going to be, um, you know, $20 or something or $25 in that order. And then you can mix it. So that's what I've done on the palette here. I've just made my green by mixing up the blue and the yellow. Um, but even with these P3 paints that I showed here, I still um, use the old glaze medium all the time when I'm using this technique just to make sure that the, uh, the glaze thins down the paint. So I've just taken that dark brown there, battlefield brown, and then I'll go back so I can actually see it here. So that guy that I was working on, if I can get in focus again. So I'll use that dark brown on his kind of old raggedy loincloth or whatever it is he's got underneath there. And you can see a bit better on the back. And you can see it's going on kind of thin, so the white that I've put on there already on the airbrush is uh, showing up. So since I've got that paint again, the classic thing is I've got it in my hand. I've got a bucket there which has got a skull in it. Um, I use that same brown just to do the bucket as a first layer on it anyway. And the handle. Probably do the, uh, the metal of the handle and the metal straps around that barrel in a different colour later on. Uh, silver or something to make it look like straps around there. And actually, you know, I may as well do the skull as well in that dark brown because I'll bring it up towards a white later on, but uh, that skull inside the bucket, which was just a joke, uh, really. I had this bucket, which is a resin bucket, to hand, and I thought, I know, I'll just glue it on the base to add a bit of interest to the model. And um, there it is. Oh, there you can go and see a bit I've missed there. What I was intending to do with the bucket, I've got some of this liquid um, resin stuff. I was going to pour that in so it looked like it was full of, water, of a, like a water with a skull inside. Um, and you can see straight away that the skull, because it's picked up the white when I've airbrushed in there, it has gone on like a bit of a wash already and given it some definition. And I've just noticed another patch that uh, missed down the back end there. And the hair, I mean, I've still got that brown, so why not stick it on the hair as well? So you need, they need a lot more work. It's just, uh, it's just, this is just getting on with the primary coat. And you can see the legs, I haven't done the legs there. The lower leg need the green again. That blended green that I've got with a load of the uh, glaze medium mixed in. And now that arm's dried, painting on again with a bit more of the glaze medium. It is adding more colour to it slowly sort of enriching it, you can see, because it's dried. And add a bit more white into it so it's a bit of a whiter Actually, I'm going to add a little bit of um, red into my green mix, just show you what I'm doing there. So I just took some of the red and I've mixed that in with my green mix and it's now given it, of course, a, um, 
almost a fleshy color. And uh, I'm going to put some of that on as well, just because I don't mind the fact that this is a, a little bit fleshy looking as well. He was human after all, and um, before he turned into whatever zombie he is. But yeah, it needs plenty of that mixing medium again, because I don't want it to be thick. Otherwise it will cover up the, the light and the shade from the uh, from the under prime that I've got on there. Yeah, that is toning down his greenness. I mean, I didn't want an underwater zombie. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, when you're doing a zombie beast thing like this, it doesn't really matter the colours. It's going to look decayed and disgusting anyway, isn't it? Just going to check what my color filters are on the uh, on the old filter, just to see that I'm not. overly filtering this with some color correction. I am. Look at that change. Sorry about that. I may actually take that color correction off, turn it off, let's see what it does. And some of this LUT. So let's whack that up, it's making it a bit cold. Yeah, that's better. That color correction was distracting me. Sorry about that. It's like a filter that I had on top of the uh, the image that I was broadcasting here. So one thing for sure is that his eyes need um, his eyes definitely need some sort of highlighting, and the red around the uh, the entrails pouring out there is probably not red enough. So let me take some of the, the neat red on the palette and thin that down. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to lock in this focus. I haven't done some painting for a while online and and um, what I can see is happening is that the focus is drifting. If I can get it in locked in like that, you can see the gore a bit better. Yeah, thinning down the uh, red again with the glazed medium just to make it... Um, Thanks, Marshall. Yeah, just to make it really thin. Yeah, so this 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 colour is not correct here either. I need to have a look at my GoPro, but you can see the yellow blue, but the red's looking distinctly orange there. But yeah, that's what I did. I just used more of that glazed medium, mixed it in with the red, and then I was away. 
And one of the things I might be able to do is bring in the, the palette to the view here. Come in real close with it. That's slightly better, but it's behind the scenes. No, that's not working for me, too close. Yes, yeah, so I've got that red again and just go in. Again, going over the same spot again, just boosts it a little bit more. And then there's that cluster of some kind of stomach gubbins on the back too. So I can see, you know, from whoever sculpted this, I can see they've put kind of like weird fleshness. Like half a flayed off piece of skin or something there. And I can go on the hair again with the dark brown. So there he is. I mean, that's nice and quick, isn't it, really? And not really um, doing much more than just smearing on the paint. And obviously the other thing about um, zombies is they're kind of forgiving, aren't they? Yeah, so I've got a really tiny brush now. I could put a pin prick on that guy's eye. Is it going to be in focus? About there. Yeah, I'm just uh, using the the white uh, from this this Liquitex range again. Just I've got a brush size here of brush size zero zero zero. Tamiya Modeling Brush Pro. This tends to be my paintbrush of choice for the smaller work, and it's still quite wet there. Um, so really, with his eyes, I'm not going to give him anything other than like a white dot. Just to exaggerate the fact he's got kind of an old eyeball or something in there. Mm. Yeah, I went on too heavy there. I've uh, gone underneath the eye. But it should still be a bit wet, so hopefully I can just get in there with the brush and wipe it out. So the other thing he's got on his face is that he has got peeled back teeth. Um, and I think it's worth kind of doing a dry brush or something across those just to give him a bit of a grimace there. Try and find a slightly larger brush in front of me. So this is a big one. That's probably too big for those teeth. Yeah, it is actually. I could use the brush I was using originally, but I don't really want to use it as a dry brush because it's quite a good one. Uh, that one will do. Yeah, that one will go. It will go down to quite a point. So it's quite a massive brush, a size two graduate brush. But you can see it gets to quite a point, which is all I want for this dry brush, where I'm going to just take this neat white on the end of the brush, and then just rub it off on the on the tissue so that I've just got a smear of it left.
his whole face is like a grimace around the the lips and stuff. So that's exaggerated the teeth a bit there. And this is where I get some weird paints that I've got. Um, where are they? Where are they? Well, I've got a contrast paint from Games Workshop, but it'd probably be better than that to use uh, a different one. Yeah, I've got these guys here that I like, which are Green Stuff Worlds wash inks. So if I put one of those into a little uh, tray here, you can see it coming out. So it's quite a dark pigment wash. So all I did was sort of dry brush over his jawline, which has got some really fine, super fine detail on it with the white. And now I've kind of, the white has highlighted the teeth a bit on it. And I probably don't want this as too strong. But the wash should sort of bring out some of the detail on the on the jawline. His right eye, his left eye actually seems to be exploding out with something. Is there a better way to get that into focus and keep it looking sharp? So you can see the bottom half of his face is kind of bony, but that's gone on a bit glossy. So um, it looks pretty grim. Looks like he's got something disgusting coming out of that left eye that maybe I could highlight that with a, a bit of the red as well. Well, it looks all right up close. It's not like a masterpiece because it is, it is just sort of washing away um, with these colors and things on there. But I've now made a sort of purpley color to put on that swollen bit. A bit of red and, uh, and blue to make a purple. There's other sort of gaps in the in the flesh as well.
to go in close again. There it is, pretty, pretty disgusting looking. So he was like a sample geezer. And um, there's one with a kind of a jacket thing on here. But you can see the same sort of disgusting, whatever it is coming out. The same sort of skull face, swollen eyes. It's a character in the Barrow Maze book, actually. I don't know what they've... Um, what they've called them. So I could give him a sort of maybe bluey, dark bluey, black trousers or something, grey trousers. Oh, I could just go for a brown trouser again. They're by Otherworld Miniatures. It's all British company that does models for. For Dungeons and Dragons, really, they do you know all the classics like owl bears and things like that. They're metal miniatures, so I randomly mixed up a kind of purpley trouser on the palette. Use that brown for the brown for the belt. And there's a rat on the base that I put a little rat on there. I'll give that make that brown. Again, it's just really just a base coat on it. Brown belt. So it's his jacket then I kind of feel like I should make it I don't know, like he was wearing maybe a pale blue jacket or something. Yeah, let's see how I can mix up a pale blue. This is going on really thin, but then again I'll do another coat later, but Count those zombie zombie bits later on. Now oh, this is a bit better, a bit thicker coming up. Oh, gone off the screen. 
So it's a very pale blue. Maybe I could darken that a bit as well, actually, with some black. Tiny bit of black mixed in to darken it up. Plenty of the mixing medium. Glaze medium, even. The other thing with blue is it can take a wash as well afterwards. I could put like a dark brown wash on it to muddy it up. Obviously, as a zombie, I don't want it looking like it's come fresh out of the uh, the cleaners. And this is a la layering technique anyway. You do sort of build up. So that's obviously got a very pale base on it. Very pale purple trousers too. Start to go on with some of that green, green slash flesh tone. He's got very bony legs actually, those should be um, a little bit more red for the pink in those bony legs. Got a load of this kind of weird stomach stuff, chest growth coming out of it as well. And on his arm. Slightly yellowy brown hair, I think. A bit of white in there. I think I've got the colour I need. Definitely needs work on that blue of his his uh, jacket thing, shirt.
I'm going to do is go on with a really dark, thin blue, blue black. Let's darken this uh, jacket up a bit. Don't want it looking too clean. Some more super bright red. Some gory patches. There it goes. Well, I'm going to take a break now and finish off, and uh, probably come back a bit later, but. Uh, yeah, I need to come back and do this a little bit more on this guy as well to detail him up because he's just green at the moment. He's got his nice shading on there though. And uh, thanks to anybody that's been listening in. Cheers.